Okay, so they have given me an equation. get 200? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, good. 200. So how many bears are there when T is 10? There are 200. I am not going to do the rest of that because if T is 40, don't I do exactly the same thing? I just put in 40s. That's easy. Does the graph of the bear population have a horizontal asymptote? If so, what is it? If not, why not? Before we do it mathematically, let's just think about it from a practical standpoint. This equation describes a bear population. Okay? Do you think there is, so, so it's going up, 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 up. Do you think there is a limit to that? Just from a, from a common sense standpoint. Forget the equation, forget the math. From a common sense standpoint, does it seem like there would be an upper limit? Yeah, can you have infinitely many bears? No, you run out of space, you run out of food, right? I mean, not lots of things get run out of. So there is going to be an upper limit to that. Any thought on how we could find it without graphing it? Certainly we could put it in our calculator. But without doing that, does anybody have an idea about how we... Here's our equation. Do we have an idea about how we can figure it out? Okay. Should we uh, isolate the T? Um, <laughs> you mean solve the equation for T? I, I, I mean, I'm just saying on um, because I, I haven't thought about that before. We could get T by itself. Remember, T is a time. Hmm. Well, let's graph it. See if you can figure it out from the graph. So make sure when you type this in, it's that whole thing divided by this whole thing. All right? So parentheses 500 plus 250x divided by parentheses 10 plus 0.5.
you actually going to see a picture that looks something like this? Has anybody figured out some window to see something? Maybe you can't tell what the answer is yet. I'm going to show you how to do that. But have you at least found something? Hmm. No one's found anything yet? Well, for my window, I let my X's go from 0 to 1,000. <clears> and I let my Y's go from 0 to 5,000. And then I hit graph. And this is what it looks like for me. Now, I, pick, I just randomly pick those numbers. But does that appear to be straightening out there? So there's a limit there somewhere, right? So I'm going to go ahead and press trace. Now, not second trace. I've done that before. I'm just pressing trace. And I'm just going to follow that cursor along. <coughs> so just keep following it and following it and following it. Keep going. Keep going. Any thoughts as you're watching that cursor go farther and farther and farther? Any thoughts about what that limit might be? Are you watching your Y values? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just, my finger is pressing the arrow key. And it's going along, and I'm watching my Y values. What's happening to them? They're going up. But they're getting closer to what? What does it look like they're getting closer to? Well, right now mine's at 497.32. And now it's at 497.51. And now it's at 497.73. Well, you're bumming me out. Let's take a look at our original equation again. And let me change things around a little bit. So y equals 250x plus 500 over 0.5x plus 10. Let me write my original equation in this order. <coughs> and I'll use x's because that's what we're more comfortable with. And what I'm basically asking you for is, what's the horizontal asymptote? How do we find the horizontal asymptote? We box in the x's. So what's 250 divided by 1 half? 500. 500. So it pans out graphically, even though we struggle with that a little bit. And it's certainly right there in the equation. There's a horizontal asymptote for that value. And it's 500. All right, let's see if we do better with number nine. The total electrical resistance of two resistors connected in parallel, OK, is given by this. One resistor has a resistance of 2.3. 2.3 ohms. So I'm just going to make this 2.3. Let X be the resistance of the second one. That look okay to everybody? All right. Now, my job is to write R equals, not 1 over R but R equals. And it's going to have some X's over here, and that's perfectly fine. But I want to get R, just plain R, equal to some stuff. So any suggestions how we might do that? There's a couple things you could do. Could we add these two together? Could those two fractions be added? Yep. Common denominator would be 2.3x. <clears throat> so x plus 
over 2.3x if I just add those two things together. Does that make sense to you? Now can I cross multiply? Do I have a fraction equal to a fraction now? Yeah. So r times x plus 2.3 equals 2.3x. And if I want to get r by itself, I'll just divide by that. So 2.3x over x plus 2.3. There is r in terms of x. So basically, we took the equation they gave us, plugged in what they told us. They told me to put 2.3 there, and they told me to put x there. And then I had to, instead of having 1 over r, I had to have regular r. So I added these two together to make one fraction. Then I cross-multiplied and got r by itself. Do you notice that my answer ended up just being the reciprocal of this guy right here? Does that make sense? If this is 1 over r, won't, the, won't r over 1 be the flip of this? Yeah, now you couldn't do that at the beginning because they were separate fractions. But as soon as you made them one fraction, you could have done that. All right, who's got a question about that? You guys have the lunch coma thing going on here. You okay? All right, second part of that says, Find the resistance of the second resistor, so that's x. Find x if the total resistance is 1.7. So take your equation that you just made and let r, the total resistance, this is the total, be 1.7. So 1.7 equals 2.3x over x plus 2. this over to here like he said and then subtract this over so we got 0.6 and I got 6.52 for x anybody else get that? Let x be the side, be one side with such a triangle or a rectangle. Express the perimeter. Okay? Tell me what we got. times W has to be 182? Yep. So what's W? No. Um, what's W? Um, what's w? 182 over X. 182 over X. Remember, that's area. So these two times each other have to be 182? Mm -hmm. No. And if that's 182 over X, so is this one and this one. All the 
was added up. Yeah. So x plus 182 over x plus x plus 182 over x. So I might as well simplify that. That would be 2x plus, um, what is that, 364 over x? Yeah. 182 plus 182. Mm -hmm. And that's my perimeter. Yeah. Now what, what am I trying to do here? Find the dimensions that has the least perimeter. So in other words, I want to look at this guy right here. This is the perimeter. And I want to find the minimum. All right, so let's do it. Well, let's do it. Now, I don't know how your window is. I'm going to change mine for sure because I had it all messed up. The last problem I did. And we don't get good by sitting there watching me press the buttons. We get good by practicing on our own. Type them in. Let's see what you can come up with. with it until you see a minimum, right? That's why you got to see it. Doesn't necessarily have to look exactly like mine, but you got to be able to see a low point. Notice I'm only looking in quadrant one because x is positive. Would you agree? And y is the perimeter. It's also positive. So your mins should obviously be zero. We don't know what's going on over here. We don't care. Wait, All right. do you want the minimum? I, I will in one second. Let me okay. see if I can find it all by myself. You got it. Which, you know. Does yours like that on both sides? So this is what I got, 13.49, 53.96. Yeah. And is that just the answer? Well, one of those is probably the probably answer. Plug it in, well, what do we want to know? Find the dimensions of the rectangle. What does this number stand for? X. That's, that's this, right? Uh -huh. so that's one of the dimensions. What does this number stand for? The, width. the perimeter. perimeter, right? That was my Y, was the perimeter. Yeah. So I need the other dimension. So can I figure that out? Yeah. Yep, I bet it's 13.49. My goodness, it is. Wait, so the dimensions are 13.49 by 13.49 so in other words it's a square and that's how it does are squares rectangles yeah kind yeah. of yeah. kind of no, no they kind are of, kind squares of. are rectangles so then why is it its own shape huh why is it its own shape then this is a special I'm just saying this for you know <laughs> don't, 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 I don't want to think about it, okay? All right, so everybody okay with that? Everybody okay with how we did, uh, dissected the answer to get the, whatever we needed? All right, all right, so here are, these are a couple of old quizzes I put together and added something. So put them together. Added. The quiz we take tomorrow will look like this. Tomorrow or Friday? Whenever I see you again. The next time.
time I am lucky enough to see you, we will have a... Liz? Did I get one? Now, I do not want you to freak out. I'm starting on the side that says practice. I don't want you to freak out when you see that first problem. Because it is a kind of a let's freak out type problem, except we're not solving it. All we are doing is figuring out which X values couldn't be answers. They're excluded from the domain of the problem. Okay? So where are we going to look? Got to look at the denominator, which would be asymptotes, if I were graphing it, which I'm not going to do this. But if I were, I am looking at anything that's going to make a denominator zero. Those will be my excluded values. Anything that makes the problem undefined. All right, so what do you suggest I do? Factor. Factor this guy right here, and how does he factor? Um, minus, minus nine. Plus one. Everybody okay with that? Not much to do with that one. This one, x plus one, x minus one. Now, don't get a common denominator. You don't do any work. Look at it and say, okay, x can't be what? Nine, negative one, zero, I already have negative one or one. Those are my excluded values. That's it. That's all you're doing for the problem. Okay? All right, let's look at number two. So I've drawn that picture for you, and now you're going to answer some limit questions. So this first question says x is approaching 1, so there's 1. I want to know what happens to the curve, what's happening to the y values, as I approach 1 from the left. Now, 1 is an asymptote, right? I can't cross it. can't cross a vertical asymptote. So as I come in toward 1, I'm either going to have to turn and go up, or I'm going to have to turn and go down. Those are my only choices. So looking at the picture, as I come in from the left, it looks like the curve is going up. So the answer to this one is positive infinity. We're heading up. The Y's are shooting up the closer I get to this asymptote on this side. Does that make sense, guys? Because if that makes sense, you can do all these. Now, the next one says x is approaching negative infinity. Wait a minute. Where's negative infinity in my picture? Now, talk about x, x. That's this way, right? So look at your picture. There should be an arrow on that picture going this way. I don't know where it is. I can look and see. It looks like there's an asymptote here, and it looks like it's doing this. So as I go to the left, I am coming down closer and closer to this asymptote, which is where? The negative one. And I am approaching that asymptote from the top, because I could, I don't, but I could be approaching it from the bottom also. I'm not. I'm approaching it from the top. So I'll put a little plus sign here to indicate that I'm coming in 
I'm approaching negative one, and I'm doing it from the top. And then the last one says, okay, I got an asymptote at negative two. Now again, when you have a vertical asymptote, you guys, I don't, I don't care however you're coming at it, you're not going to cross it. So when you get here, this is like a wall. You're either going to go up or you're going to go down. That's it. Either positive infinity or negative infinity. Well, I'm coming at it from the right side. Here's the two ways I can come at it. Positive means from the positive side, from the right side. So what's happening to my curve as I get closer to this, this direction? It looks like it's shooting down. So the closer I get to negative two for x, the farther down y goes, so negative infinity. On here? Yeah. Because infinity, you can't really approach infinity from the, I mean, <coughs> you either go down or you go up. There's no, like, sides of infinity. Oh, I see. These are infinities. There are sides to numbers, to asymptotes. Asymptotes have sides. So this is, I'm approaching this asymptote from the top. All right? They got that? Okay. Find all of the asymptotes. So again, kids, I'm not asking you to sketch this thing. I'm just asking you to tell me where the asymptotes are. All right. Well, what's one thing you can tell me for sure? Okay. So for, for sure, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Denominator can't be zero. Now, Katie has said, I heard her back there, she said, okay, there's not going to be a horizontal asymptote. Because what's wrong with the problem? There's no x squared on the bottom. And you can't do two over zero. So there's no horizontal, but there will be an end behavior slant asymptote. And it will be found by doing synthetic division. So what goes in the box? Three. Three. And then two negative four, one. So hopefully my division is somewhat correct. Remember, that's the remainder of the division, and it does not count. What's left is your asymptote. So you have an end behavior asymptote. This is my vertical. I have an end behavior asymptote or a slant asymptote. We're going to call it a slant asymptote at y equals what? 2x plus 2. 2x plus 2. Two. 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 Now remember, that is an equation, so don't just write 2x plus 2. Oh, I have a question. If the top number was like 2x to the third, and the bottom was like x to the second, yep. and another x. How would you do long division? Okay, long. Yep, you have to do long division. Right. Yep, it's going to be a division problem, so you would have to do long division if that were the case. Okay, number four. Joe can do the homework in six hours. Bo. And Joe can get it done in four hours. How long does it take Bo alone? So remember our setup for that? It's like 1 over 6 plus yep. 1 over x. Yep. Yeah. So this is our general setup. But yes, for this particular problem, it would be 1 over 6 plus. Uh, 1 over x equals 1 over 4. <coughs> uh, how 
common denominator? 24x will work, so will 12x, so will 36x. There's a ton of them. It doesn't matter. Just make a match. So if I use 24, then I'm going to have to multiply this one by 4x, this one by 24, and this one by 6x. So 4x plus 24 equals 6x, 24 equals 2x, and x equals 12 hours. So it takes Bo 12 hours to do that. This is the whole thing is just a graph, one big graph. So we're going to find a whole bunch of stuff. here, make sure that your asymptotes are equations. So x equals negative 1 is my vertical asymptote. Now, I want to be real careful before I put that in. What should I probably do first? Factor. Because what might happen? I might cancel, right? So I would suggest that step 1 be let's factor. And just see what happens. So, how does that factor? Uh, 3q plus minus. Yeah. So, we're safe, Jake, because nothing canceled. Therefore, that is an asymptote. Does everybody understand that if that would have canceled, it wouldn't have been an asymptote anymore? It would have been a whole. And then would it have just been like a vertical line, too? It would be it just like a line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, it would, because that's all we have. Okay, we all right with that? Okay. Um, so we're good. All right, what else do we have in our picture then? And and behavior asymptote. We're going to have to go back. We already did one of these, but we'll go back and do this division. <coughs> so my end behavior asymptote is 2x minus 1. Is that what you got? So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. What, what does 2x minus 1 look like? It's, like uh, it's a line with the y-intercept at negative 1 and a slope of 2. So you've got nice graph paper there. So you're going to come down, you're going to put your y-intercept at negative 1. Now this is the y-intercept of the line, not your whole thing. We haven't done that yet. And then a slope of 2. I need you to remember that horizontal asymptotes are their own kind of end behavior asymptote. We talked about it the other day. If these two powers match, your asymptote's going to be horizontal, right? Yeah. It's when this one's bigger, the power is bigger, that we have the, the slant. All right, everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right, I'm going to kind of lighten that up a little bit because that is not a point on the graph. I use that to get my Okay, so now I got my asymptotes. All right, what else can I put into my picture? So I can tell right here that my x intercepts are going to be at 3 halves and maybe 2. And those are points, so I am going to go ahead and put those on there. 
My x-intercepts come from the numerator. They're what makes the fraction equal zero. If the numerator is zero, y is going to be zero. Those are my x-intercepts. What's my y-intercept? Yep, I heard somebody say negative six. How do we find an x, excuse me, a y-intercept? We let x be zero. Isn't that on the y-axis? Uh, I got asymptotes, I got intercepts. We said there were no holes. So at this point, I need to be able to put my picture together. Can you visualize it? Yeah. They're asymptotes. You got these two points, go ahead and connect them. <coughs> Does that look okay to everybody for that side? Yes. And then over here, you got a point right here, so we're going to look like that. I've been referring to these as x intercepts. Remember, zeros is the same thing. These are called zeros because they're values that give you zero. X-intercepts, zeros, roots, solutions, all those mean the same thing. Wait, so we, okay. So I don't want that word zeros in there confuse you. That's X-intercepts. Be ready to fill in the rest of those blanks now. Yeah. A lot more limit practice. So here we go. Number six. What's the limit as x approaches infinity? <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to look at my picture. Use your picture. Where is x approaching infinity? That way. So I want you to tell me. What is happening to x, excuse me, what is happening to y as I go farther right on the picture? The farther right I go, what are my y's doing? Get bigger. Getting bigger. So the limit as x approaches infinity is infinity. That is not approaching anything. I guess it is approaching this asymptote, but isn't that asymptote climbing? It's not like there's a ceiling on it. It just keeps going. All right. What happens as x approaches zero from the right? All right, now this is a little bit different than um, that other one we did here. Where is x zero? Right there? Now notice my purple is coming into X on both sides, right? So if I come in from the right, that would be this way. Where am I heading? As I get closer to X is zero, what are my Y's doing? They're getting closer to negative six. So the answer to that one is negative six. So I'm coming up this way. What's my y going to be? I don't know, but can I figure it out? How would I figure out what that y is? Plug 2 into the equation. Isn't that how I would find the other half of that point? So I'm going to plug 2 into my equation. 
so I get 8 plus 2 minus 6, which is 4 over 3. Did you get 4 thirds? So this is the point 2 comma 4 thirds. So as x gets closer to 2, y is going to get closer to 4 thirds. Think about it. Isn't that what's going to happen? Yeah. So the answer to that one is 4 thirds. Now, the moral of that story is I needed a y value that I didn't already have. How do I find y values? Well, again, x. I could pick the limit of anything, right? I could find the limit as x approaches y. And then you do as it's like. <coughs> Are you negative infinity? What's happening to my curve as I go this way? What's it doing? Going down. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity is negative infinity. Think about continuing this purple arrow for hours. Wouldn't you just be going down farther and farther and farther? As we approach, now be careful, we're approaching zero. So x, oh, okay. here's zero. Okay. So x is getting closer to zero, which means, Katie, we're getting closer to this point right here, right? right. Yeah, and so what are our y's doing as we get closer to this point? You're getting closer to your six. A minute ago, we did this problem, which was number eight, and now we're doing 10. What is the difference between eight and 10? We're getting closer to this point, right? Does it matter which side I'm coming from? As I get closer to this point, aren't I getting closer to four thirds? Yeah. The only time it's going to be different is if you have an asymptote there. If you're coming to a point, then where you're going on either side doesn't matter. Right? Think about it like this. If I ask Charlie to stand up, and I see Eli to stand up, so one's coming from that direction, one's coming from that direction, but I wanted to sit, I want them both to sit in that chair right there, it doesn't matter which direction they come from, they're both going to end up in that chair. That's the limit right there, that chair. Okay, last one maybe, almost. I, don't, I can't read the bottom one, so I guess this will be the last one. What's the limit as x approaches 3 from the left? Well, here's 3. So here's the point I'm talking about. <coughs> That's 3 comma something. Can I find the something? It's going to be 18 plus 3. 3 minus 6 over 4. Uh, what is that? 15 over 4. So this one happens to have, it, it says find the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. But it wouldn't matter because if you're approaching a point, Either direction is going to bring you to that point. So the limit's going to be 15. Yes. So, like, could you just like plug it in? Yeah. Now, except, and obviously I can't plug in negative 1. If I had a hole somewhere, I would be able to plug that in. But, think about it. If I had a hole there, Wouldn't the limit from both sides be the same? Even if it's a hole? Aren't I coming for the same value here? Yeah. So as long as it's not an asymptote, then the limit from both sides is going to be the same if it's a continuous type curve. If it's like a step function or something weird like that.
when I see you again Friday. by Friday. Our quiz is going to have this kind of stuff on it, right? Might have just two of these, might have all of these, I don't know. But it's going to have that stuff on it. Yeah, I'm done. You're not packed up, people. Look at the time. You paid for eight more minutes. You're going to get eight more minutes. So get those notes back out. following what I'm doing? Yeah. So now i got to write my answer using intervals. Now, the zeros can't be intervals. The zeros happen at negative 3 and at 4. But where are my negatives? What interval am I negative at? Negative infinity to negative 3. Any number you pick in that interval, and don't use a bracket, because negative 3 wouldn't be negative, it would be 0. So that's got to be a parenthesis. 
any number you pick in that interval is going to give you a negative result. Now, where's a positive? Well, positive in two places. It's positive between negative 3 and 4, right, in here, or bigger than 4. One more. Number two is an actual solve, so we're not going to do that. We're going to figure out in this problem where this guy is less than or equal to zero. In other words, where is it negative? We're only looking for the negative spots. So here we go. Where are the dots on my number one? Negative 7, I'm going to color it in, right? That's colored. Negative 4, positive 6. I'm going to start putting in numbers, and I want a negative result. So I'll start out here this time. Negative 8 would give me negative 1. Negative 4. And something big squared positive number. Negative 8 minus 6 is negative 14 squared is like 196. So what happens when I multiply a negative 1 times a negative 4 times a positive 196? Positive. I'm going to get a positive, which is not what I wanted. All right, how about negative 5? 2 negative 1, negative 5 minus 6 squared, 121. Does that work for me? Color it. Good. You want it. Zero. Any number will work. Any number between here will work. I'm going to do zero. 7 times 4 times 36. Not good. And then 7. 14 times 11 times 1. Not good. So the answer to the problem is just that little section. Bracket, negative 7, negative 4. You getting the gist of how that works? All right, we'll stop there. Don't tell your parents, we're wasting a minute. So next time we have a quiz, I'm going to pick up there.